We are back at day two on the uh, Northville Lake Placid Trail. Uh, as you saw in that last little clip, I called it quits last night and made my way out. I'll tell you about how all that happened, but my mom and I are here. I'm gonna pause. are gonna she's gonna hike with me up to Woods Lake and then I'm gonna keep making my way along the trail and I'll see her again in Paseco after that. Dad's just gonna hang out in the car for a little bit because Woods Lake is only like a couple hundred feet off the road. So uh, yeah we'll show you back at Woods Lake when we get back there. We're here at Woods Lake. My mom just headed back to the car. You can see it's a little bit clearer today. I'm gonna get on the trail and get moving. I'm gonna be hitting a couple landmarks with some foot bridges, but I, I want to tell you guys all that went down last night. I did decide to leave. My stuff was just too wet. It wasn't safe, even though I have good reasons for leaving and I think it was the right decision. I still wish I didn't have to because it feels a little bit like oh, first night. I couldn't even stay out one night before having to go back to civilization. I uh, left and I was trying to figure out how I was going to get back to my folks place. And I'm just going to pause because it's a pretty view here. Um, I was trying to figure out how I was going to get back to my folks place because there was no cell service in the area and I was just kind of at a loss for how I could get there. Um, and honestly, I'm not super comfortable with hitchhiking, at least not asking for the ride and throwing my thumb up and stuff like that. Some people are all about it, um, but I don't know. I'm just not super comfortable with it. But I was just, I was talking with God and I was just like, hey, I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. I was feeling insecure, feeling kind of down and frustrated and all those things. I hop on the road. I was going to go look for the ski, the cross country ski area that's nearby, and I realized it was going to be miles before I found that place and I wasn't even sure it was going to be there. So I decided to start walking towards town. I don't walk a hundred feet and a uh, truck goes by. I just kind of wave as he goes by and he puts his brakes on, stops, backs up, asks if I'm sick of, sick of walking. <laughs> as a matter of fact, I am sick of walking. And he drove me all the way back to my folks place in Mayfield. Uh, so I, he never told me his name. We got talking, he was telling me all about his uh, his crazy girlfriend, and <laughs> we got to have a really good conversation, and um, I appreciate him. God definitely sent him to help take care of me last night, and uh, I am back on the trail, and I'm about an hour behind right now, but that's totally doable. We can make that up, and uh, I'm feeling good, ready to give it another shot. So we're heading to Silver Lake today, and from here at Woods Lake. Uh, we'll be stopping for lunch at um, the, let's see, West Stony Brook. We've crossed West Stony Brook before. Um, it was that big wide crossing. But we're going to have to cross it again, this time over a footbridge. Um, you'll you'll recognize the footbridge because it was in the last Northville Lake Placid Trail video that I did with Casey. So, uh, yeah, should see some uh, familiar stuff today. Uh, yeah, should be a fun hike. to give you an idea of what's happening today. I started down at that parking area and I made my way up to Woods Lake, that point three miles, signed in the trail register, so on and so forth. Just crossed that footbridge, that's the one you saw, and we're making our way, we're probably over by where it says Monday 9 and 10, making our way around the side of Woods Lake. As we get around, we're gonna hit one. So, if it focuses, one, two, three foot bridges before making our way all the way over to this foot bridge here which is where we will 
hopefully be having lunch. But from there, we're hiking all the way along the trail up past Rock Lake, all the way up to Silver Lake. So it'll be a full day of hiking, probably about 12 miles, uh, a little over 12 miles. So it should be a nice full day. Hi, I think that was footbridge number two. It doesn't feel like it should be. I feel like I should be farther than that, but who knows? Uh, I'm gonna assume that since that's the first footbridge I've come across since Wood Lake, that that's the first one on the map since Wood Lake. Um, but yeah. I'll keep you posted. I think that I should be crossing two more before I get to West Stony Creek. Now I've gone only a couple hundred feet past my last check in there. There is a much larger, well, not necessarily a larger footbridge, but a larger creek to go over. Yeah, this is pretty. Look at that, that's cool. Nice. I think I'm going to stop and take a water break. Stream, but I'm gonna try to go around and see if I can't find a, a way through this without getting soaked. Let's see here. How about you and you? Instead of going over there, I'm gonna try to stay on these, but be careful. Oh, little frog. There we are. Upsy daisy. Okay. Nice. I just made it up this hill here, and I'll uh, show you in the map what I did, but I'm going to take a little water break up atop this hill, but we've definitely made it uh, past footbridge one. Those two footbridges were at that second, or well, footbridge one, footbridge two, footbridge three. That third one is where we had the double footbridge situation. And we're making our way around, and I've gone up this hill here, and I'm just at the top of this hill, and I'll be waking, making my way down soon towards the footbridge over Abner Brook. Well, I took my <laughs> little water break on top of the mountain here. I decided to drop a layer and put some stuff on my pack to take my uh, rain fly off it. Yeah, now we're heading downhill. I'm gonna try to cool off, dry off a little bit. It's a little bit foggy here in the boggy top of this mountain. On the trail didn't catch anything by the way <laughs> but it was worth uh, throwing a line in because it's beautiful looks like the uh, beavers have decided that this section of the trail needs to be a river <laughs> so they probably were doing some work upstream and sending this stuff down over here to Abner Brook they're quirky little turkeys those beavers It's about 1.30. I've made it to the crossing that happens before we get to West Stony Creek. But this one is up there, man. Oh, doggy. Yeah. It's beautiful, though. Check that out. That water is crystal clear. Oh, 
Oh, that's gonna be the hardest part right there. <laughs> so I promise to keep my on-camera complaining to a minimum, but I figured this might be worthwhile information. Um, yesterday, as I was making my way through, it's like trail turns here, um, my left knee was really hurting especially when I would go downhill and uh, it would just feel kind of weak but today my left knee feel, my left knee feels fine but my right knee is killing me this goes to show this is not injury <laughs> this is just my body getting used to all this walking hopefully it'll eventually get used to it rather than just keep falling down worse and worse so you can't see it too well in the video but right right across there in that bright spot there's a clearing on the other side of the on the other side of the river and I believe that is where Casey and I met West Stony Creek on our North Phil Lake Placid Trail hike back in May um, I'll let you know if that's not true as I keep hiking but I think that's the spot we're just on the opposite side of the river all right, I was correct. That clearing was definitely where Case and I met West Stony Brook. And now I am at the junction where over here is a really pretty uh, bridge, footbridge over the river. I'm going to come out and hang out by this bridge for a little while, take a break, have some lunch, refill my water and all that such things. Yeah, I need a break. Lunch today, crackers and cheese, crackers and cheese, crackers and cheese, <laughs> and tuna and hot sauce. With a little bit of water by a beautiful scene. It is 2.30, I have eaten lunch, did a very little bit of fishing, didn't catch anything yet, but it's fun to wet the line, <laughs> and uh, I'm heading away from West Stony Creek, and I got about three miles to Rock Lake, that's really my next landmark. Technically, there's one more little landmark between us, 0.9 miles in, but Rock Lake is my next stop. So Rock Lake is where Casey and I turned around because of the black flies last time. So, well, that says two and a half. My map says three. We'll see what it feels like. It'll probably feel like four. <laughs> but on the trail we go. A piece of advice for you guys. Sometimes your crossing does not have stepping stones. So you got to just suck it up and walk across it. You want to be careful though, these rocks can be slippery. Oh, wet shoes, wonderful. So Casey, I am making my way up to Rock Lake. I forgot how much hill there was on the way up here. Man, we earned that one. And I made it to the uh, Rock Lake Junction. I rarely buy those mileage, but it says I still got another two and a half miles up to Silver Lake. And uh, there's point one down to Rock Lake. I think I'm just gonna take a quick breather here and keep making my way over to Silver Lake. Just try to save my knees a little bit this early on. Um, I know Rock Lake is pretty, but I'm uh, thinking, there will be a lot of pretty on this trail. 
So I had uh, stepped in a lot of water on this section of the trail. So my boots got pretty soaked. There was like foam coming up off of the insoles. They're pretty wet and my feet were pretty soaked. Um, but what I did is I just, while I'm taking a break here, took my sock off, wrung out all the nasty sock juice, just really let it drip. I got most of it out now. And then uh, I intend to do the same for the other foot, but this just kind of helps trying to keep as much water out of my feet as I can. Um, just because, well, they get all pruney and that makes them susceptible to things like blisters and stuff like that. So just dry them out as often as you can. <music> I am getting back on the trail from the Rock Lake Junction here and uh, next stop I'm going to be able to skim past Miko Lake and then hit Silver Lake. And there I believe are a couple of lean-tos if not just one lean-to and some campsites at Silver Lake. I'll find a spot if nobody's around I will uh, hang near the lean-to <coughs> so that I can use it as a picnic table. Um, otherwise, I'll be able to camp at any campsite with my hammock set up. Yeah. Onward ho! Alright, I have made it to my first crossing of the Sacandaga River. This is a pretty decent sized crossing. I'm going to have to do a little exploring to see where it's best to cross. Alright, well, it looks like this is going to be a shoes off crossing. So, I got to take these boots off, these socks off, and hold them in my hand as I make my way across. Because it's better to, better than having them totally drenched. from the Sacandaga River up to Nico Lake is awesome. It's just waterfall after waterfall after waterfall. Just following the river up. Uh, staying over to the west side of the river. But man, if I had more time, I would be all about trying to fish my way up that river little by little. But I'd rather get to camp today. See if I can't fix the lake a little bit. So I can definitely tell you this much. Now that I'm up here uh, a little bit deeper in the wilderness, the trail has certainly gotten a lot denser. It just feels a lot more wild out here, which I find really exciting. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a pretty lake here at Miko Lake. I took a quick breather, and I got 0.8 miles left to camp. It is 5 o'clock, so if I get up to camp within the half hour or so, I uh, should be good to be right on schedule. Elizabeth, I found the tree. Oh, hi. Told you I'm a tree hugger. 
Welcome to Silver Lake, and I really wish I had a boat right about now. Beautiful. So I've made it around the bottom edge here. I'm making my way through the various campsites, looking for the lean-to. Trying to see if this is a trail. Yep, there is the trail up to the lean-to. Let's go see what the lean-to is like. We may just stay down here at these campsites because they're beautiful, right by the water. But let's check out the lean-to before we make that decision. How about thing they call it snake skins and uh, what snake skins are for is um, it keeps your tarp all contained uh, it makes it easy if you're planning on a clear night um, you don't have to deploy your tarp but it can get out really quick while it's partially set up um, it also is really useful for trying to get a tarp which is essentially just a giant sail um, it uh, makes it helpful to get it set up in the wind. If you watched my video paddling the Genesee, uh, or paddling the mighty Genesee, you saw that tarp just getting yanked out. And uh, I've tried a couple of different solutions for trying to deal with my tarp. I've tried um, one interesting one was uh, loofahs. If you untie a, a loofah, the little like scrubbies that you use to, to, to bathe with that you can get for a buck at the grocery store, um, if you untie one of those loofahs, it's just a big tube of mesh. And I've tried that as a snakeskin. It didn't work really well. Uh, the reason it didn't work really well is because it just ripped. It ripped any time you tore it, even the slightest bit of hard, it, it just would tear. So um, I gave up on the loofahs and I started using a piece of paracord and just kind of throwing a little half hitch every couple feet down the line and that worked. But I had a bit of scrap material the other day and I decided to just make that and it worked out really well. Um, so far so good, I really like it. And uh, we'll see how it does when I actually face a windstorm. Uh, but yeah, it's my little bit of uh, sleep gear for the day. So I'm all uh, situated over here. Got my hammock set up there in the background. Yeah. Um, and I am... Uh, trying to just get my stuff dried out as best I can while I uh, cook dinner. And I'll talk to you more about my uh, cook kit on another night. I'll be having dinner every night so <laughs> and breakfast every morning. So, yeah. So, the goulash. Goulash is a win. Oh yeah, that's where it's at. Mm -hmm. So, the, uh, the goulash has been delicious all the way but um it's and i'm having to really force it down now i'm just because i'm full not because it, i'm sick of it but uh it's just good to know i i got full before it got to this point which is not too bad at all um should make it so that the rest of the goulash meals are pretty hearty meals and we'll see what the other ones come out like i have finished dinner i packed up my laundry just got to put a couple last pieces of pieces of things away and uh yeah beautiful night and i'm gonna hunker down in the hammock and do a little bit of reading and chillaxing get off my legs for the rest of the evening but yeah thanks for coming along see you tomorrow